kind of memories will come from this match? A live picture of Pete Sampras, the number one player in the world, the number one seed here at the U.S. Open, getting ready to meet the number two seed here, Michael Chang, who could become number one if he defeats the champion on the court now. How about that last point we saw from that final right. last year? That was one of the best points I've ever seen in tennis. Just tremendous. And, uh... Pete, maybe me and Pete come in and get a little view of that and get him all jacked up for today against Michael Chang, as you said, Pat. He could become number one in the world if he were to beat Pete Sampras today. And Pete, if he can win uh, here again at the U.S. Open, will keep his number one ranking. We're going to see Pete walk into this room we've been talking about the last few days. That's the supervisor's room right there, and he'll walk in and you'll we'll get a glimpse of what goes on in there. You see a room right in front of him. It's like a training table in there. There's room on the right there as well, and he go in there. There's a television in there and a phone, and the... Uh, and uh, his guys are probably in there. Does he have a fax in there? And uh, does he have a what? <laughs> a fax. <laughs> he probably has a fax machine. I don't know. Uh, we're going to come back here and see if Michael Chang comes out of the locker room. We're told that he's going to come out at 6.05. And then we'll have two live great tennis players in the stadium court. And we'll get this men's final underway here at the U.S. Open. The first match on the stadium court was Bjorn Borg and Bob Hewitt, a night match. And once again, we say we're going to end the era here at Flushing Meadows with another night match. And it's going to be two other champions, the number one player in the world, Pete Sampras, and the number two seed here, who could be number one in the world if he beats Pete, Michael Chang. And welcome again to our open coverage here, the 1996 version. We had a little rain, a lot of rain as a matter of fact, a couple hours of delay here. We're waiting for Michael Chang to come out to take his walk to the stadium court. Pete Sampras is already underneath the court. Watch a little football, relaxing, went out and hit some balls and got that big arm warmed up. Uh, and now we're getting ready to finally play some tennis, Patrick. Well, it's going to be great. And as you said, Pat, I mean, it's been so many years that we've had such tremendous night matches here at the U.S. Open. I think those are remembered here at Flushing Meadow more than any other matches, particularly because you get the night, you get the New York crowd, that electricity. And what a way to end it if we can get this match in. It looks like we're going to be able to finish this match under the lights. Michael Chang is a very spiritual, very emotional, sometimes uh, young man. And he's now uh, by himself with his thoughts, thinking about this match, refocusing on the men's final of the U.S. Open. It's a place he's wanted to be for a long time. He'd love to have another slam, wouldn't he? Well, we saw in that great uh, piece before right here, Pat, that uh, he, he was the first one to break through out of the pack with Agassi, uh, Courier, Pete Sampras, and then he won the first one, but he hasn't won anything since, and he's always been trying to kind of catch up to those guys. They've got a lot of grand slams in their pockets. Pete Sampras has seven of them. So here it is. Here's the time for Michael Chang. Right now, he's worked his way to number two in the world. And he's right behind that door, the Grand Slam supervisor's door, a little room back there where Michael or Pete Sampras likes to, to stay and wait for his opponent to come out, and then they'll join them at, before they go on the stadium court. The fans, uh, most of them are still here. They've been underneath eating hot dogs and salads and drinking water and trying to stay loose themselves to get ready mm -hmm. for this uh, men's single final. And there you see the tough New York tennis fans. Uh, they've come back and they'll be here to cheer on uh, their favorite players. They told Michael Chang that he could warm up if he wanted to. As we saw earlier, Pete Sampras was out there, but he declined, uh, mm -hmm. rather wanted to stay up in the locker room and maybe be with the Chang gang up there talking his game a little bit or by himself collecting his thoughts. Uh, he, he likes to stay up in the locker room, actually, and get himself very loose. He does a lot of exercises in the, uh, in the locker room to get himself all ready. And uh, there's going to be a couple keys to the match today, I think, for Michael Chang and for Pete Sampras. And uh, <laughs> what's going on with these two guys, Pat? Sean McDonough is still in the area, <laughs> out there in the watch of tennis. Let's go to your pointers on this match, Patrick. Well, I think the key to this match, number one, is going to be how Pete Sampras uh, comes out today, how he's going to be physically uh, after the tough matches he's had. Is he ready to go? Is he ready to go the distance? I think now the conditions really favor him because it's going to be at night. It's a lot cooler outside, and that, I think, will really help Pete, particularly if it's a long match. Secondly, it's going to be who's going to serve better. We talked about the big serve of Sampras. Michael Chang has worked so hard to improve that. If he can serve well, he'll get some free points. And Michael Chang, here's his moment, Pat, as you said. Will he be aggressive enough and here comes Michael. Will he be aggressive enough to take it to Pete Sampras to take away the number one ranking from Pete? Now, this is just inside the building with the house of the locker room. He just came down. You can see he's got his game face on. And he'll take this walk now, and the fans will greet him. Let's listen in. Steffi Groff was in here and said she loves this walk because she gets to inter interact with the fans. I think they all do. They get to 
see the fans and actually hear some cheering before you actually go out on your battlefield. Well, you should hear it a couple times. When he comes out of the main building, he'll hear it. When he gets just under the stadium, before he gets out on the court, and then, of course, when he takes stadium court. In the 1990s, he has the third best U.S. Open record, 27 and 6, trailing only Andre Agassi and Pete Sampras, who will be greeting him underneath there in about a minute. The last walk from the locker room by any player, U.S. Open history, from the locker room to the stadium court. Next year we go to the new stadium and they won't have this. So a little piece of history here. And Michael Chang would like to see a bigger piece of history here. And they're going for a huge piece of history tonight. Pete Sampras trying to win his fourth U.S. Open title. Michael Chang going for his first. And there's who's waiting for him out at the stadium. He's about a minute away out there. And behind the door there, Pete Sampras now open. He's on the right little dressing room there. One the Monica Sellis prefers when she's in there. And we'll see him come out. He'll have his gear. He hit a little while. He looked pretty good. He looked pretty fresh, actually, when he was hitting. He did. He's probably stretching there, just getting loose. Now, where those guys in the yellow shirts are standing, you turn left there, and our cameraman will do that, I'm sure. Bob Fishman's great pictures. And that's Chang will come down there, and there you see him. Here we might be able to pick up on the strategy here. Who, who walks in <laughs> first? We'll if Pete walks in front of him, or if Michael has his way in first. Yesterday, Pete was waiting for Ivan Isovic, but today we haven't seen him yet. Michael? Mental game here we can look at live. See if they look at each other. Yesterday, Pete and Gorin didn't even look at each other. Yeah. You see the door opening back there on the left Scott side, no right where that man no is there walking, no going in. That's, that's Ken Farrar, the supervisor, is going to get Pete. Said, All right, it's showtime. Here he comes. Right. Thanks for your patience. Have a good match. Here we go. Here we go. Well, they didn't greet each other. They didn't say, hi, how are you? Good luck. <laughs> they will let their tennis do their talking. When we come back, we'll let you see for yourself. Who will be the number one player in the world? That's on the line here at the U.S. Open. We come back. Tim Ryan, Mary Carrillo, and John McEnroe will have the call. Enjoy the tennis. We'll see you later. It is 6.15 Eastern time, and that sun is beginning to set. Not too far away in view from Louis Armstrong Stadium. Sight of this men's championship delayed uh, more than two hours by the afternoon rain. The defending champion, number one, Pete Sampras. Number two, Michael Chang. 72 degrees now. That is considered to be especially good for Pete Sampras. 71 degrees humidity, a little higher than perhaps the Sampras camp expected it to still be at this time of day. Well, much at stake here, of course, the U.S. Open Championship first, but also the number one ranking. If Sampras wins, he will be number one, and if Chang wins for the first time, he will move into the top spot. Hi, everyone. Tim Ryan, joined by Mary Carrillo and John McEnroe here at the stadium court, ready for this championship match. And well, we often hear that expression, speed kills. We've seen Michael Chang exhibit it from the time he was a young player on the tour. He seems to be even faster, John. Well, Tim, that's his big weapon, and that's what's going to win him the match, I feel, today, along with his intensity, his aggressiveness, his, his quickness around the court. Uh, Pete Sampras is a very quick player, but not in Michael Chang's range. He's got the big serve, Sampras. Chang's got the movement. This was a, a point yesterday against Andre Agassi. He's content to run down balls from all over the court and hit winners from any angle. And he destroyed Agassi in the semifinals yesterday. 
and I feel like he has a very, very good chance. Pete Sampras, I don't think he's going to be at 100%. I picked Pete before the tournament. I think I'm going to have to give a slight edge to Michael Chang right here, right now. All right, so he must be allowing for his good service return as well, then, against Sampras. And also, serve. hopefully, like my brother said, getting some more first serve points. And if he can get that percentage up above 50%, which I know he hasn't done in six matches, but he is capable of it. I know that. <laughs> All right, well, Mary Carrillo, let's talk about Pete Sampras, the defending champion. Of course, he won here in 1990. But you kind of feel that his loss in 1992 was perhaps a turning point for the better. I really think that was a big deal. Pete Sampras had gotten a little bit sick in his semifinal win against Jim Kerr. He wasn't feeling 100%. Went out against Stefan Edberg in the 1992 final, and though they had split sets and Sampras had had a break point opportunity in the third, he just went away and faded. And of course, it was a great defense of title for Stefan Edberg. But boy, Sampras hated losing. He hates getting to the finals of these majors and then not winning. And it's hard to beat Pete Sampras on Sunday. I mean, since that <laughs> loss, I mean, uh, this guy just, you better go after him on like a Thursday night or a Friday morning. But as I say, once he gets to this position, he, w he says nobody remembers who came, who came in second. And uh, it hasn't had happened with him. And that, I think, is a major edge. Of course, Michael Chang's been disappointed in some major finals lately. He lost in the Australian Open final this year to Boris Becker. He got to last year's French Open final and lost that one to Thomas Musser. They're both great warriors. And I think also Michael Chang likes being the underdog. He was a great underdog yesterday against Andre Agassi, even though he's seated higher. He likes that underdog role. Sampras is obviously the overdog, if there is such a dog. Are you going with the overdog? I'm going for the overdog. <laughs> I think he's just got a little too much game on this hard court. They're both great hard quarters. I still like Pete. An All-American Championship for the U.S. Open title when we return. Ladies and gentlemen, we should like... We are back at the U.S. Open Tennis Championships men's final. Pete Sampras defending champion and Michael Chang as you look at the draw board outside that draws all of the spectators when they enter the main gates to see who's done what to whom and it's now down to two. Head to head Sampras leads in their professional career 10 to 7. They played about 20 times as juniors. The significant thing of course is that Sampras has won eight of the nine last matches including two in 1996 that they have met uh, twice Memphis on hard courts in a semifinal one in straight sets and in the final in Hong Kong also on a hard court Sampras won in three sets. 25 years of age, born in Washington in the East, he grew up in California where he learned most of his tennis, now lives in Florence. 52 wins, eight defeats in match play in 1996, five championships, but none of them a grand slam, and this is his last opportunity. He wants it badly for his late coach and friend, Tim Gullickson. And here are the gentlemen that uh, he conquered en route to this final. There were some difficult times. Second round against Yuri Novak. Struggled around, moped around, prevailed 6-4 in the fifth. Was really up for Philippoussis in a battle of big servers. And uh, John Newcomb, the great Australian, felt maybe Pete had played his final in that match because he seemed so ready. And then oh, after the uh, dramatic win over Karachi in five, uh, he dismissed the number four seed, Goran Ivanisevic, with just a little blip in the tiebreak set. Michael Chang, ranked number three, seated number two, and uh, proved he deserved to be here. 24 years of age, born mm -hmm. also in the East in Hoboken, New Jersey. Grew up in Placentia, California, now lives in Nevada. 55 wins, 12 defeats. His match record this year with three titles. Finalist at the Australian. He defeated Jaime Onsens and then Neville Godwin. Tough match against Vince Sped Spadia, and then uh, getting past Jakob Plasek. And another somewhat tough one against Javier Sanchez, before dismissing Agassi in a surprisingly easy match in the semifinal, straight sets the best tennis he played throughout the tournament. The umpire is Rich Kaufman. And he is from New Paltz, New York. And it's called time, and the players are greeted by the crowd. Surprisingly, still a big crowd. The people found dry places to stand in under the stadium. And uh, they have been here for nearly three hours since the end of the women's match. Jeffy Graf prevailing in straight sets over Monica Sellers. One hundred twenty-five mile an hour service winner to start. So the humidity is still high, but the temperatures dropped about 10, 15 degrees.
gone down as we see Michael hit that forehand winner. Not a very good half volley from Pete there. And I think that's going to help Sampras' chances. So even though the humidity is still fairly high, a lot better off than he was two and a half hours ago. It's probably about two and a half hours extra butterflies they got having to wait this out, wondering if they'd even play this match. And that's tough. Service eight, his first. 30-15. Well, if he can serve like this today, it's already a couple big first serves. He's going to be in good shape against Michael Chang. certain ways I just feel the players want to get this match over with 30 Michael Chang for example we mentioned has to play in Chile Tuesday play an exhibit you think it'll be a, a bit of a letdown for that match <laughs> play Marcelo Rios on clay <laughs> somehow I don't think that's in his and mind the here. agent says they haven't decided if it rained tonight what what would happen uh, give me a break <laughs> another race right to the same corner Swinging it out, not the uh, big MPHs on those two aces out there. 106 for this one, 101 for the last one. Well, he's sending Michael a message there. I'm going to swing you out wide, and sooner or later, Michael's going to have to move that way, and then he'll serve the big one up the middle. It's got great variety on that serve. Go, Pete. So Pete Sampras with an easy hold for game one. China. Finally, a pretty sky after uh, lightning and stormy weather for a couple of hours. Michael Chang will serve now to try and get even here in the first set. They stop a football game. You know the weather's pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty dramatic. Over Jets, the Indianapolis. Lines. Although, you know, the Jets were playing, so there may have been <laughs> the hapless Jets already. <laughs> Such an early... So early in the year. Six. Michael Chang finding space down the line. Played a neat and tidy game against Andre Agassi yesterday. Oh. I think Shane's going to try to play it a little bit safer. Make Pete work awfully hard early in this match. Not go for too much unless he's got a nice short ball. And in turn, Pete's going to try to take advantage of that 15. fairly average second serve of Michael Chang's like he did there. Chang testing uh, any kind of a breeze down there. He does that a lot. That's he doesn't ball. like that ball. <laughs> My, uh, I'd have to say that that was a ball San Sampras hit that winner on, <laughs> if I had a guess. It might be a little flattened out on one side. Well, that's the serve that hurt Agassi yesterday, big time. <laughs> Michael Chang doesn't want to work that hard to win a point, a clean winner from Sampras. He hasn't gotten in a first serve yet. So if this is going to be what he's got to do all day long, I don't like Chang's chances. Beautifully struck there, though. A nice, clean winner. Pete Sampras. That was some shot he made from behind the baseline, reaching back for it. 30 on Michael's got to make sure he does something with these approach shots because Sampras has got awful good passing shots and Chang does not cover the net that well, being only 5'9". One of the biggest forehands in the game right here. 30 all.
Chang pressing in a neutral rally, and now he's got, him, got himself a break point. Again, serve to deal with. You don't want to get into early trouble like this. Mary, that's exactly what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to press here. Obviously, easier said than done in the U.S. Open Finals for the first time. What's at stake for him? The chance to be number one ranked player in the world if he were to win today. Sampras served in his first game. Well, I think you're going to see him mix it up a little bit more than that. It's early in the match. Only <laughs> we're really pressing for stats here. <laughs> He's preferring to serve the big bomb so far, but we'll see that change as this match progresses. Michael's not going to be happy right now in that early serve, giving up that early service break. And Pete really didn't do a whole lot. Came up with a couple big shots, but not enough that you think he can break them. Player of Michael Chang's caliber. Chang obviously tight early in this match. And why wouldn't he be? Sampras has already won seven majors. Michael's only won that one in 1989 when he was only 17. Pete Sampras has been number one in the world for three years, looking to try to hang on to number four this year. And has won eight of their nine last meetings. Now Sampras has been serving trouble. Three break points coming for Michael Chang. You'd have to assume that most of the crowd will be on Sampras' side based on what happened against Alex Karecha, that heroic effort on Thursday. And yet... In New York, they like underdogs. And even though he's seeded number two, that makes him the underdog in this matchup. I really feel 15. the reason Michael Chang stepped things up in the semis is because for the first time he was thought of as an underdog again. A nice big serve gets Sampras out of trouble momentarily. Still two break points for Chang. I just think Michael Chang played so tight the first five rounds. Again, with he knowing all that was at stake, that he was seated very high at number two. I think it showed in his game, but he swung so beautifully, so freely. Just and amazed at how flat, yesterday. though, Agassi was, though. He did look loose, but Agassi... Yes. Obviously, uh, I don't know what happened. Didn't get a lot of sleep to start with that, or come up with 50 things. Must have played very close to the line. Chang's having another look at it. Matt Camus apparently exited stage left <laughs> as well as Sam percent earlier in that game. That looked like that ball dropped Look on good. the line there. Yes, we expect to have it back, I'm told. Just a momentary uh, glitch in our camera. Yep. Known as the Mac Cam. break points. That's okay, fine playing from Pete Sampras, punctuated by this rally. I mean, normally people would be shooting that back in a defensive mode, but not Sampras. He got it back nice and deep and cross court and ended up winning the rally off the strength of that great running forehand. I must say, he looks pretty fresh here starting this match. Not a good sign for Chang. Yeah, yeah. So Sampras holds for three love in the first set. 
Tim Ryan, Mary Carrello, John McEnroe, Stadium Court at the U.S. Open men's final. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Not interested, right? Michael Chang serving at love three. No, I'm just too smart for that. It's not that I'm not interested. <laughs> Chang's got to decide, to my mind now, that he, he's got to get a very high percentage of first serves in because that 82 mile an hour delivery did nothing to stop Sampras from swinging away. And again, he's been having a hard time with a high service percentage the whole fortnight. Tampa's working the backcourt in the big hole down the right side from the blast of three. At the moment, Tim, it looks like a heavyweight versus a light heavyweight. Just a bigger guy, like what happened in Australia with Becker Chang. Sampras is calmly waiting for the short ball and just ripping it for winners right now. Becker won the championship match in the Australian against Michael Chang. Mary, to follow your point, he's serving at 41% through six matches at this tournament. On the first serve, and he gets that one in. A little loose from Pete. I can hit a monster forehand like that and to come in and just just looking to chip the ball to the middle of the court and dumps it in the net. Big surprise here. Sampras hit a big forehand there. Chang with the miss hit. Just let the ball drop too low. Hit it at the top of the racket. Metal mistake there. See if it costs this game. Oh, started that beautifully up the line. Chang looks very tense. He did look quite tense when he walked out. Yes, he did. A long walk. He had a very, very serious look on his face. Even for his standards. <laughs> Grim. Long wait for him uh, with the rain delay. Uh, biggest moment of his tennis life. A chance to be number one and to win the U.S. Open Championship. Break point. Two of them. Sampras. One save. We really haven't done a bad job serving this game. Still finds himself down break point. Pete not having trouble at all with the Chang serve. Stay away, stay away from San Francisco's forehand on the second at the moment, though. Try to kick a high one at the back and tougher for a one-hander to deal with. Oh, beautifully played by San Francisco. A big return. Well, he couldn't get it away from the forehand. Pete Conley ran around it. Love. Hit a big inside out forehand. Uh, forehand put him in immediate trouble. Went behind Chang. Always a smart play. Sampras with an incredible start here in the U.S. Open final. His fifth final, by the way. And there's Chang being wrong footed. Down four love now for a set. Sampras has now won 18 of 27 points played so far. Tim, you're going to start calling the time we played like yesterday. <laughs> it's going so fast. Well, it was Chang in control that match against Agassi, and then Sampras in the first two sets against even Isabel. 30. Not thrilled at the moment. Not much to clap about here. Mom got off dad. A, such a good start against Agassi, and he's just so uptight right now. Joan Betty Chang and his brother Carl is on the left of the screen and coaches him. And you know, Pete senses that. He's been around a long time. He's played a lot of big matches, and he's stepping on the gas pedal right now. There's Chang trying to turn things around. Um, he's, he's, he's very alert, Michael Chang. Very opportunistic. He had something to work with there. An 85 mile an hour serve. That didn't worry Chang at all. Gave him time to attack the return and then close in with the volley. Well, that's a shot that really hurt Andre Agassi yesterday. See Pete already with twice as many winners. More than oh. many. Pete Sampras a far better server than Agassi, we should point out. Yeah. 
Chang has to continue to make Sampras work here. Make him work for each and every point, which he hasn't done so far. Only been a couple points when he's done that. Will pay off later in the match. Yes. Point for Michael Chang. For any year, Pete Sampras. Last two points. Sampras does not want to give up this cushion break that he's sitting on right now. In my mind, he wants to win this in straight sets and go home. You know, of all the medical problems he's had in the last several days. The longer a match goes and the longer a rally goes, the more you've got to like the second seed, Michael Chang. The last several days. How about the last three or four years we've seen this, these elements come up? Perfectly struck down the line that time. We saw it, Mayor, as you pointed out in the open, the first time the 92 Courier match. And on we go. Look at this forehand. Now, Pete is uh, hitting that forehand like nobody else right now. Beautiful technique right here, the Sampras backhand, the one-hander. He switched from a two-handed backhand, Tim, when he was about 13 or 14 years old. His old coach, Pete Fisher, actually went to Don Budge's house, took a plane to look at the grip Don held for the one-hander. That's how far he took it. Finishes the game with an ace and a five-love lead. Sampras lead. Well, this was moments ago uh, between games after the, at the changeover. Pete Sampras uh, called for somebody to come over and take his racket away. Uh, he is very finicky, as Mary has uh, termed him, about his rackets. And uh, I guess a question here for you pros is uh, humidity and uh, string tension. And what do you think he's working on? I don't know, but he's up five loves, so I keep that <laughs> Can't racket. Can't be too worried, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pete Sampras is so finicky, finicky about the tension of his strings and everything else that he has at least seven rackets strung the morning of his matches. He wants it that fresh. And what would the, oh, okay, but at the same tension or with a variation? And there's something is going on up in the seats that got the attention of the players. Michael Chang held off serving way up high. And I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it doesn't seem like there's any harm done. Usually there's a couple of rackets in the back, Tim, that are strung like one or two pounds tighter or lighter mm -hmm. depending on the conditions and of course this is a very muggy humid night you make adjustments to that if you're Pete Sanford Kang's first ace I he's think at love five Pete is like uh, Yvonne Leno they keep the same tension for all the rackets but they may like Mary said restring all of them the morning <laughs> of the match if it's a little more humid other players myself included would bring five or six different tensions on the court to get on the board, a good aggressive backhand there. 30 30 he what, doesn't want to get caught backpedaling. That's been his problem so far in this match. Pete has just simply overpowered him. Only the sixth point Chang has won on serve. set well I never like winning first set bagels and I don't think Pete did, does either it's sort of a superstitious bad luck vibe to win sets that easily crowds naturally gonna get behind your opponent there's an ace down the middle and wins at love to 5-1 sort of like when you're throwing a no-hitter and nobody on your team talks to you 
break to break the spell. Well, you don't mind in throwing tennis, that no hitter. Yeah, in tennis, you want to, you want. It's not a good idea because you know you're going to have a letdown, and you know your opponent is going to kick it up a level. So Pete Sampras will serve for the first set. Chang serving at 40% in this first set. That's 1% uh, less Team than his tournament average through six matches, and that is low, and it's been a problem here in the first set, clearly. Sampras with his fifth ace. Oh. At six at 120 miles an hour over the high side. Years. It's a lesson right now in the first set. How to come out ready to play finals. I mean, Chang is just not ready yet. You have to wonder if it's just the nerves from the final, the two hours combination, probably ball. And he also, uh, yeah, he also declined to warm up. Pete, we saw come out for 10 or 15 minutes, hit a few balls, and that may have helped Pete get loose, be ready to go earlier. Ball good. 30-15. That's a fine volley from Chang. Because he was stretched, he had to swing at this a little bit more than normal and got himself a good angle. Even tougher, the fact that he hits a two-handed backhand and have to go to the one-hander there. Pete up at 56%, getting the job done so far. Net. Chang hoping for second serves, obviously. And if Sampras is anywhere in the 60s, you've got to like him in a match. That means he's just looking for a break of set to win. side of the net. Oh, how does that? That's, 40, that's almost 15. impossible. Take a look at this. This ball just barely goes over the net. Matter of fact, clips the tape. And Chang just cannot do anything with it. Eyes bulging. You know he'll go for everything. Down <laughs> two set points, though. That was that return. Right at him. Got the racket in front and blocked it 40, back. He 30. wants kids, Tim. He was just protecting himself there. <laughs> <laughs> Sampras, a point from the first set. And finishes with an ace at 119 miles an hour. Six of them for Sampras.